Authors Tell All, a podcast by Shy Soul. She's bringing you author interviews, book discussions, and more. Stay tuned. Hi, everyone. We are live with author Butterfly Books, a.k.a. QT Kennedy. Hi, how are you doing? Greetings, Starlight. How are you? I'm doing fine. It has been a very interesting week, you know, working really hard. I see you've been working really hard, too. And let's just get into talking about your books and all the other good jazz. So... To start off, let's discuss your book, Red Ink. Tell us about that. Red Ink. Red Ink, Bosses, Bullies, and Butterflies is essentially a love ode to lovers of the literary arts. It's a hodgepodge of really interesting characters that all have varying viewpoints and perspectives and feelings and opinions about the current landscape of the urban fiction industry. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. First of all, I just want to take just a slight pause and just give my little perspective. When I, guys, when I read up on the book, read the description, read her little, um, her little spoof of just the whole, just the whole energy of the book, the sample, I loved it. The moment I read the description and it gave me that telling the industry about urban fiction, I was like, this is something different. I'm already caught into it because this is why I do the podcast. So I said, this is a lovely book already. And I was like, I want more. So to, to follow up on that, what made you want to write this storyline? Essentially, we're writing the story every day. Mm-hmm. When we are on social media right now, in this very moment, you can go to Facebook and you're going to see somebody posting their opinion, their feelings, their thoughts in general about a scenario, an experience, an episode in their lives as an author, as a reader, or a publisher. Am I telling the truth? Yes, yes, you are. Right now, in this very moment. So, we are writing this story and have been writing this story all along. Um, Unfortunately, to me, my opinion, we have seen this story told in social media in some very desecrating, demeaning kinds of ways. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. I love it. Yes. Continue. (laughs) The, 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 The fighting and the backbiting and all the ugly words and ugliness on social media. Now, essentially, I'm very new to the industry. Me as well. And actually quite surprised in a lot of ways, that a book like Red Ink had not been written before Red Ink. And I say that because as writers, a few different reasons, but especially as writers and authors, one of the basic fundamental principles of writing is to write what you know. Mm-hmm. So it seems to me that the authors, the writers in this segment of the industry have been knowing for some time all the issues that are going on amongst authors, readers, and publishers. The real beauty of being a writer is the power of the pen. It is it is that. It is a very powerful tool. And so, for example, I can remember many, many moons ago, this brother said to me, and I don't know how true it is, I'm gonna I'm gonna take it as being true. He said to me many moons ago. He was um he was a writer and he was a historical writer, a nonfiction history. Mm-hmm. And he was saying that whenever you see a society about to be overthrown, when you see a society about to stage a coup, 
the first thing that the rebels do is in, is put the squads in prison. They put the writers in prison. Mm, that the is very true. They is, they, the first thing they do is shut the writers down. That in and of itself is very telling. I need not elaborate, true? Yes. Yes, <laughs> okay. that is very true. So, that's right. And so therein lies the, the power of the pen is something I think that many times us as, as writers, we really take for granted. Yes, we it use is. Our powers for good, so to speak. Our books create safe spaces. They create forums for places where we can design and create resolution and evolution to the things that ail us. Make sense? Yes. That. So red ink is that book. Again, essentially at its core, it's a love ode. It's a love ode to all of us that love what we do, that have a great passion for the craft, and that's readers, writers, and publishers. Mm-hmm. So it offers a safe space. It offers a forum for resolution and evolution of our industry. That is... That just makes me feel some type of way because this is exactly how I feel. As an author, I feel that exact same way. So when I read the half of the book and when I read the description, I was like, I already know. I already know what points to ask, how to feel, how to interact with this author because all authors, they should really read this, all readers, because it's giving you that insight. The insight in my mind is what I taught myself before even coming in this industry because I just know how how it works. I know the tweaks and all that that this urban industry brings. That's why I always ask in my podcast, how do you feel about the urban industry? Like, like how does it make you feel to write books for this industry? And what's the good side and the bad side? And honestly, in this book, it gives you that insight. And if you don't pay attention to that, then honestly, I don't know what kind of author you are really inside if you don't see the truth within this book because as many as I read it I was like I see everything I was like I can see the future with this book because that's how it made me feel and I love it this is a very very good concept I'm so honored I'm so honored and so humbled by your love yes because I'm a very intellectual person so I love getting that intellect out of books. It can be, you can write the most thuggest book and it can be different, but it can still have that intellect. Like, I'm not from that background. So, you know, I don't know anything about that, but I can research. But if I read a book that's by an author who has been through that and they're giving me that insight that I did not know, I'm like, wow. Like, is there any way I can just give her my whole him or her my praise for everything they didn't put into this book that no author can really do that's what I felt with this book because I in my head I was like wow I talk about this all the time why didn't I think of a concept like that I was like this is brilliant and it's very different I see why it has a five star it should it should have more than five stars and that's not just me being extra with the book it's 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 a very good read it's very different and that's what I love about books especially in this industry is being very different that's what's going to catch the reader and author's eyes because you're a new author you want to be on the scene and be like well I'm making my statement I'm here that is what this book is that is exactly what this book is oh wow (laughs) you are warming the cockles of my soul shine you're welcome and I mean you deserve it because of the way you've written it. Now, I've asked you how you felt about the book. I've asked you how you got the the urge to write this story. Now, I'm just going to skip to this question. What do you, for you to write this book, how do you really feel about the industry overall to make you get this idea to just put it out there? Overall? Mm-hmm. I mean, ultimately, I identify with all the characters in the book. And you've read Red Ink. I see that. So you know 
Mm-hmm. You know exactly what I'm saying because again, it is a hodge hodge of feelings mm-hmm. and emotions and opinions and positions and perspectives about the current landscape of the urban fiction industry. So, in many ways, as I was writing the book. Even though I may identify mostly with, let's say, Leslie Lane, mm-hmm. Butterfly Brooks, I do understand Monique Ellis, and I do understand Hiram Rivers, even because we know he's he's considered the scoundrel. Um, well, at least that's what the readers are saying. He's mm-hmm. considered the scoundrel of the. But even he, in in some of his scoundrel like ways, I do I understand his perspective. I I understand Maceo. Maceo may be one of my favorite characters, and I identify with Maceo in many ways because he's probably a representation of those that sit in the middle. You know, mm-hmm. where. You may have those very strong feelings like a Leslie Lynn or Mustafa Akeem. Mm-hmm. And you may also identify with Kendley and Monique and, and Latoya and Hiram. But Maceo, and for that matter, his his, his wife to some degree, Nikki Pearl, they represent that, that middle, the medium. Ultimately, they are, the I think, the peacemakers in the peace. They, they have that overall that survivation. So, as I was writing the book, ultimately, I began to not even, not necessarily disagree, but certainly understand some of the other perspectives of those who, honestly, let's get honest, who value quantity over quality. That's the truth. Yes, I. People get very ooh. sensitive about that, and and they may try to. They want to pretend that that's not so, but it is. It really if, is. If that is why you are publishing books. Then so be it. Stand in your truth, whatever that is. You see. Mm-hmm. Because see, that's when I think we wind up uh, desecrating and demeaning our work when we're just when we're not honest. Get honest about that. If you have not always been a writer and you saw an opportunity to generate revenue, then stand in that truth. That's your truth and that is okay. You are allowed that. Yes. But don't pretend that, oh, you know, you've been a writer all this time and, you know, um, just because, you know, certain people don't like my, my books, you know, just don't read them and getting into all these arguments that ultimately don't make a lot of sense because you're not standing in the truth that, yes, I saw an opportunity to make some money and quality is not necessarily a priority for me. Mm-hmm. That's okay. Because guess what? There is an audience, obviously, there's an audience for that. Obviously. But stand in that truth. Like uh, Mustafa Akeem, he stands in his truth. Now, his truth is the antithesis of what I just said. Mm -hmm. You know, he's all about quality, the evolution of his people. He doesn't like the ratchet books. He doesn't like the rat trapness nature of some of the books. He doesn't like the poor editing and poor writing. If you read the book, Mm -hmm. you know, he gets on in live. He talks about that very honestly. But at the core of who Mustafa is, he is someone who stands in his truth. And and if I don't know how far you read, but if you continue to read, you will see where ultimately he even gives those who are about quantity over quality the place and space to stand in that truth. Just say that's who you are. Yes. De- now, one thing I have to say is I identified with this character to a T. You want to know why? Okay. Because everything you Girl. said is who Shy Soul is. I I have how many different companies? I've written how many different books before I even got published? You know, I was on Wattpad and trying so hard 
to develop my craft and putting so much heart into what I did. I didn't just want to write a book, be like, boom, this is it. I'm going to go to a publisher. No, that was never on my mind. I was doing it for the fun and the love of it and how it made me feel, how it gave me the escape to write a book or a story because my mind is running always a thousand miles a minute. I'm always thinking of storylines and characters and who should be evil and who should be good or should they be both or, you know, that's how my mind always worked. That's how my mind worked with my art and doing this too. So when I read his parts, I was like, he is I and I is him. <laughs> That's how I felt because he was saying so much that I say as well. Like with my company, I say just what you said, the quality over quantity. That's exactly what I say. That's exactly what I put in my questions before you even join my group. I'm sorry, but if you didn't answer that question, I was like, mm, I don't know. But if you did, I'm like, okay, they gave me a valid answer about the quality of work, the quality of a book cover, the quality of a book, the quality of writing, editing. I'm like, okay, they're, they're a bomb author right there because you believe in a quality of your product, not the quantity. I never cared about how much I would sell or this, that, and the other. I always thought of the quality of my work I'm a perfectionist I can say that that's one of my things that I just if it doesn't feel right to me I will delete everything I will erase everything and just be like scrapped start all over that's how I am and when I read his part I was like she got me she got me in this book how did she get me in this book <laughs> yeah so you say that you identify with Mustafa, you think, more than any other character so far? Actually, I identify with him, and I identify with a few more. Of, actually, like, I can honestly say maybe all of the characters in the book. Because, mm -hmm. in a good way, because I have so many different sides of me. You know, I have the quiet side, I have the bold side, I have the silly side, I have the business side, and the business side, and the driven side, and the ambition, that's really part of who shy soul is i'm a capricorn i'm an introvert that's exactly who i am and that's what i put into all my work and that's what all the characters brings in this book they are individuals who have so much diversity to them like how could you create a character that has so much to them so complex but it's so good you don't get confused by it that's how mm -hmm. It's like they're an actual person. That's how I feel about the characters in the book. It's like they're an actual, like, living, breathing person. Even though it's not real, it feels weird. Not weird, but real. And it's, right. it's like, weird, but in a good way. I was like, how? This is a brilliant author. How can she uh -huh. manifest all this? That's how my mind works when I'm creating a character as well. I want them to be that character that the reader was like, oh my gosh, I can identify myself with this person, this character, and like, almost like connect, you know, that's what brings a reader in, like, on that first page, I was stuck, on that first page, that's what drew me in, I was stuck on the book, when I read that first line, we ain't afraid of no ghost, are we, I was like, wait a minute, huh, I read, I read that line more than once, because I'm a type of person who reads between the lines too, and I want to be like, what does she mean by that? Is this a point to? It has to. It's a point to everything she put in this book. So I'm like, hmm. <laughs> like I was like, my mind was tickled. I was like, and then I read down. I was like, okay, it's getting very interesting. I was oh, like, you are so now, now that's what I want to ask you. When you put that first line, italics and all that, what did you mean by that on your chapter one, the first page? Interestingly enough, well, all the chapters have titles. Mm -hmm. And basically, most of the titles come much later, after you know, the chapter has been written. Mm -hmm. So, by the time I finished chapter one, that title made sense. Because 
because interestingly enough, the um, Leslie Lynn, her blog was probably the last thing that was written for that chapter. And it was actually probably written after I'd written um, several chapters. Mm -hmm. So the we ain't afraid of no ghosts, are we? That's Leslie Lynn's voice. That's her voice. So when you ask me, um, you say, how did I come up with that line? Yes. That's Leslie Lynn's voice. That's how she talks. So when I'm developing characters, um, I know a, a lot of authors, we do this. We are all somewhat schizophrenic. You just said to me, well, you know, I do identify with Mustafa, but I really identify with all of these characters. I feel all of them. Mm-hmm. That's another thing that we all need to remember when we are socializing on social media and off social media for that matter. As authors, we're all a little crazy. That's just the truth. Because you're walking around with 50 different voices in your head at different times. So, essentially, you're dealing with a a swirl of of schizophrenics. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, I do. I'm saying that half joking and half serious. That's something that we need to remember that people who are creators, that creative fire is very chaotic. And that's something that we have to remember when we're engaging one another, when we're dealing with one another is that we are creative forces and the creative force is a chaotic force. So we have to show up for each other and automatically forgive our transgressions even before we transgress. And again, a book like Red Ink gives us that space and place to remember these kinds of basic fundamentals about being a creator about being a creative fire, a creative force. You see what I mean? Mm Mm-hmm. So those are some things we certainly, we need to remember about each other and love and respect each other in that chaotic energy. So coming up with the character profiles, um, their voices, what they sound like, what they look like, what they feel like, you know as an author, because you write, you're a novelist, mm-hmm. you have to sit with them. Oh, yeah. And you have, yeah, you have to get to know them. You have to get real clear on their energy, their vibration. Is this something she would say? Is this something she would write? Is this something she would do? Mm-hmm. And it takes time and patience. And that's another thing that I think many of us as authors, as novelists, in the current landscape, we are missing the time and energy that it takes, the nurturing that it takes to nurture characters. You have to nurture them. They almost become your children. So I see, and this is not this is not even me saying this, I'm, I'm going to say this too, a inspiration for writing Red Ink is the readers. Because I'm reading the the readers are frustrated. They're angry. And they're downright exhausted with reading what Leslie Lynn described as meandering thought logs and rough drafts that you're uploading and saying it's a finished novel. The readers are leaving those reviews and saying... (laughs) Are you serious? Why are you doing this to us? You see? Mm -hmm. Because they know, based on what they're reading, that the authors are not taking their time and nurturing the characters. I have seen, and I know you have, I know you have, Shy Soul. I have seen that review about one-dimensional characters so much. Yep. It's mind-blowing. Mm-hmm. Just over and over and over and over again, readers are leaving that same review. What's up with these undeveloped characters? What is going on with the undeveloped?
underdeveloped characters. I'm tired of one-dimensional characters. You see that over and over again. Exactly. And before I was even a writer, I was a reader, of course. And I always, I always loved reading books. Like, that was my thing. And when I would read a book, I would always, like I said, read between the lines. And like, what? How has this character been the same since chapter one? And then I'd be over and so bored with the book, I don't even finish it. And my mom would be like, well, you didn't finish the book? I'd be like, mom, you go ahead and read it because we share books. My mom would read a good book. I'd be looking over her shoulder like, ooh. I see you got a new one. Can I read it after you? Right? And she will tell me, because she knows what I like to read. She will tell me, well, I read it and I know you would want to read it for yourself, but it's a character. I already know how you're going to be. You're going to see everything, not wrong with the book, but everything it should give the reader that imagination. If the book doesn't give me the visual and like I could picture it like a movie scene or anything like that, I'm going to get so disinterested with it i hate it but it's true i would want to read a book that has me like wow this character really changed or this character really figured it out like i have a character that i'm writing and it's a short story but the way he keeps talking to me he's like hey sis you gotta make this longer i have more to say i can't just the character that he is i can't just stop him and, you know, just move on. I have to keep on until, like, he runs dry and be like, okay, I'm tired. Next chapter. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to just listen to you. Come on now. What's next? And he was like, okay, now we got to go on to the... And I write backwards sometimes, too. He was like, okay, we can't, we can't... We're not there yet. You need to give me a little bit of background. So go to chapter 12 and give the readers a little bit of my background story. So they'd be like, oh, wow, that's how he's that way? And then come back. I'm like, okay, that that character, for this book, I've never had a character like that. So I'm like, where did this character come from in a part of my mind? That's what I love with the creativity. Like, how did they come up with that character? Like, how is that possible? Like, is this a real person for them to come up with something like that? That's what I love to read in a book and get it off of a book. Mm-hmm. Likewise. Mm-hmm. It, it's crazy and well actually I don't still have I just don't have one character it's actually another character and I've ne- never written a character like her either she I don't want to give anything away or anything like that but she she's powerful in a way that a man that a man just doesn't understand like yes a man can manipulate but he doesn't really does he really know that a woman can do the same thing is he just overlooking that she's a woman like, oh, well, I've never written a character like her. And writing a character like her with a little bit of the times now with social media and um, all the women wearing wearing layers of makeup and you really don't know who that person is. That's the type of character I've developed. You don't know who she is, really. She has many faces, many layers and it's, cre- it's kind of creepy because you're like, I knew her as this person, but I truly don't know her. And I've never written a character like that. And that's what makes me think, like, how did I come up with that? Like, did I watch something? Did I read something? No, I just have a very overactive imagination. <laughs> yes, we do. Yes, we do. And I've asked many authors, like, what is your routine of writing a book? You know, do you write backwards? Do you write in order? Do you come up with your title first, your description? Like, what is it that jumps off your book? Me, I write the title and the description first. And it's many authors who say that they hate writing their description or synopsis. I love it. I love coming up with a description for my book. I know I see that a lot too. I don't tend to have too many issues coming up with a description for a book. You're asking me how do I start a book? Mm-hmm. Why do I start with it? Like, what is your routine? Do you, you know, do you have you like a cup of coffee? Like, what is that like that type of routine? Me, mine's is tea, some Lorna doing cookies, 
and I start my book. <laughs> and music, of course. That's my routine. Lorna, Lorna Doom, that's um, my mama. She loves those. Um, in this case, it depends. It really does. With Red Ink, Red Ink started as an idea mm-hmm. more than anything. It was watching and seeing, especially as an author, what was going on around me. Mm-hmm. So Red Ink started as really just just this idea. How do we show in a holistic way? I'm stressing holistic. Mm-hmm. Because like I said, it's a hodgepodge of characters, a hodgepodge of feelings and perspectives and emotions. So how do we show, how do we display, how do we share all that's going on around us in a holistic way. So that's how Red Ink really started. How can we show this? Mm-hmm. And then the story began to unfold. And I think that um, I think Leslie may have been the first character that came to me. And she, again, actually, Leslie is inspired by the reader's reviews. Mm-hmm. She is, she, she's the voice of many of the readers that I've seen leaving those reviews about how they feel about the current landscape of quantity over quality with so much of our industry. And then from her, the other characters were born. So it's probably in that, in that way, that may be the case with most of the books that I, that I write and writing and developing and finishing is they'll start with this idea. What is this idea that I want to share? Mm-hmm. And how can I share it in a holistic way? So, and then sometimes I do have some stories that start as um, something from real life. Someone has told me a story that intrigued me. And so I take what they told me and begin to ask a whole lot of questions in my own head. And then the writing takes place as I'm trying to answer those questions. Make sense? Mm-hmm. You know, why did this person do this? Why did they think this? How did they get here? You know, because many times when people are telling you a story about their life or some kind of event that they experienced or anything you can grab from the headlines, you know. Well, what made them do that? Why did they think that? Why did they decide to do that? You know, what happened before? Then you start to imagine all the parts coming together. Um, And then, as far as my writing ritual, I'm certainly, I'm a big tea drinker. Mm Mm-hmm. For sure, and I do a lot I, 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 of my writing in the wee hours of the morning, the yeah. midnight morning. Me too. So from twelve to like four is probably when I'm doing most of my writing. And generally, I'm gonna have some kind of classic film, a favorite film of mine playing in the background because it's good juju, it's good magic. Mm-hmm. That's exactly how I am too. Yes. Like I'm I be up as you can see, you see me posting little certain things or everything like that, like twelve all the way to five AM or six AM maybe. And yes. I'm in college too, so I be putting a little stretch on it sometimes, but that's I'm able to, you know, write good stuff is at that time. And I have my music on. I will listen to that same song, the same song, over and over again because it flows with the book or it flows with that chapter or that character. And it never gets old to me. Like, I have a song that I, every day this week, it was the same song I had on replay for this book. And it really helped me. Like, I got 
5k to 10k done in that day and that was all because of the feel and everything and emotion from the song from him my character all at once is what gave me that boost to write you know i never get tired of writing anyway so no definitely music music is always music is a staple in our house we're musicians at my house so that is just an automatic Mm -hmm. that's that's all day every day all day long all night long just always music so that's ongoing never stops Mm -hmm. there's always something playing Oh, yeah. yeah, and my yeah. mom, my mom, she'll be listening to a old jam, and I'm like, "Mom, I love that song." She was like, "How you know the song?" Like, mom, you know I listen to my oldies too. What's the name of that one? That goes with the the character, the auntie, or the mom, or anything like that. It gives me that feel. It gives me that feel for the next chapter or something like that. So I may be playing an old song. My mom will just pop in the room and be like, what do you know about that? I'd be like, mom, <laughs> you already know I love all types of music. So. Yeah. What school do you go to, Chef? I go to a community college not too far from where I live. Um, then I'll be going to my college of my dreams in Chicago in about two years. What college is that? I'll be going to Northeastern in Edison, Illinois. Groovy. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> now, we have a listener. She says, how does she keep her character so fresh and original from each book? That's a very good question. That's a very good question. Mm, so fresh and original from mm-hmm. each book. Hmm. goes back to what I was saying earlier I think Mm -hmm. is the sitting with the characters exactly I think yeah I I really do take my time with what does this character think what do they feel where were they born where did they come from why are they the way they are now inside the book and that's the beauty of writing. When you're writing, you do not have to list all of those things. Mm-hmm. If you know how to craft the sentences and the words in a way, the reader will get it. So, you know, you, you don't have to say every single thing about that character, the reader begin to infer because they'll know someone who is similar. Mm -hmm. They'll know someone or have met someone, um, maybe someone in their family, uh, an acquaintance, a close friend, who has a similar idiosyncrasy, who has a similar thought process, who has a similar career, who has a similar history, a similar parentage. So... That is, that's probably the best answer to that question is that sitting with those characters and really taking time with them. Very true. Yeah, getting to, really getting to know them because that's what I do. I will, well, first of all, let me say, I write from a chapter outline. I do do a chapter outline. I do character sketches. Um, so that I can always refer back to those character sketches and be real clear on who these characters are. Because sometimes I could start writing a chapter and I'm writing and saying something and I'm saying, wait a minute, now, is that really something he would say? Does that make sense for him? So I can go right back to the character sketch and see, hmm, maybe not. Because his mother was this and his father was that. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't make sense for him to be this. You see? Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing, too, is I am 
a trained spiritual counselor. So in my work, I've done a lot of listening. Mm -hmm. A lot of listening. And you have to listen to your character. The same way I've had to listen to people. You have to listen. It's a lot of listening involved in counseling. So you have to listen to those voices. And being a counselor, I would say, has probably trained me to really sit and listen to those characters. So they're always, you can have 12 men in a room who all played football at a big college, who are all pro football players, who all come from two parent households, they all come from the same city. But If you are really listening, you'll be able to hear the nuances that make them different. That is true. You see what I mm mean? So it's it's the listening that makes, to answer, um, I guess, questions. It's those nuances that keep the characters different and fresh. So you have to listen. That's beautiful. That, I really... I'm sorry, but I'm going to use that. <laughs> I'm going to use that with some of my characters because I have so many characters who have so much to say. Like I've said, like he has so much to say. It's not like I never put off anything my characters have to say because that can make the whole chapter of the book go left. And then that would make me feel like, oh, I don't like this. I'm going to delete it. And I've had many people tell me, don't, don't delete, don't never delete what you write, you know, just save it. And just in my mind, I just feel like, nah, this is up to par. I could easily just rewrite this, keep rewriting until I feel like, boom, there it is. That was what you know, he wanted I, me to write. Go ahead. Right. And I'm actually thinking of an example in Red Ink. I didn't mean to interrupt you. My apologies. That's just fine. With Maceo and Hiram. Maceo and Hiram are very similar. Mm-hmm. They're essentially, they're really cut from the same cloth in so many ways. But Hiram, his background and his family are from so-called prominent people, okay? Mm -hmm. While Maceo's family is a little more blue-collar. But even in that, those backgrounds are somewhat similar. But it's those subtle nuances of, let's say, Hiram's father being a local politician and Maceo's father having been been killed in an accident actually but Mm -hmm. him being a more blue collar worker but still a leader even amongst his circle Mm -hmm. so you see but there's this subtle nuance that makes them different yeah I I, I could tell that too Mm -hmm. I could definitely tell I was like this is very interesting how she put that timeline together and how she worked that in and 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 another um listener said this is a very good question this is okay you're gonna love this one they said do you think that you stepped on any toes with publishing red ink oh absolutely yes bring on the truth i want to hear it absolutely and let me say this um Really? You understand? Oh, of course. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Of course. Of course. Um, I say that to say it in this way. Curtis Mayfield. Who, are you from Chicago, Sean? I am from Illinois, yes. I do not stay in Chicago. Illinois. Yes. Not Chicago. Okay, go ahead. So, uh, father, brother, Curtis Mayfield, we talked about music, may he plunk his guitar in peace. Mm-hmm. His song, If There's Hell Below, We're All Gonna Go. Do you know that song? Yes. Good. Okay. And so, in the spirit of the message in that song, that's why I say, mine too, you see? Mm-hmm. Because to some degree, we're all culpable for any of... All, for all the victories, triumphs, and tragedies, and travesties, to some degree. Do you see what I mean? Yes. 
to voice their opinion. Continue. So, they, they I'm, I'm guessing that I guess it's probably referring to Mustafa and Leslie um, stepping on the toes. And then, then me, as the author, writing the book overall, stepping on the toes. But ultimately, like I said, when we first started talking, you can go on social media right now and get your toes stepped on. Yep. Right now, in this moment, that you stop me when I'm lying. You're not lying at all. That's, okay. No. Right in this very moment, you can go on Amazon and you can pull up those reviews. On just pick pick any book, any of the popular books, any of the less popular books. It doesn't even matter. And you're going to see some toe crushing. You're going to see toe crushing. Mm-hmm. So. That's the other thing I think that many readers have been saying to me and inboxing me and sharing with me their feelings and posting their reviews saying that the book is very real. It is real. Because while it's all fiction, no character is necessarily based on anyone in particular. They are figments of my imagination. It's taken from a real landscape. Thing. Yes. So the toe crushing is going on right now. It'll be going on tonight. It'll be going on in the midnight morning. And it'll be going on tomorrow morning, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and so forth. Stop me when I'm lying. You're not because that's why I really don't too much involve myself. You know, I am there, but I'm also not there. You know, I just don't. Right go on and just be in all the drama and all the tea. I know of it. I just don't involve myself in it because I'm not that type of author. Mm -hmm. Right. Which, again, let me be clear and I have to stress this. Which is why I wrote Red Hank. Remember, it's a love ode. It's Mm -hmm. a safe space. It's a beautiful space. Seminole City is beautiful. It's a beautiful space. These characters are beautiful people. Am I lying? They no, you're not. They are because I was like beautiful people. Mm -hmm. They all have their own history, their own past, their own present, their own future. They all have their own very beautiful vibrations. It's it's a beautiful story. It's somewhat tragic, of course, but that's real life. Like one of uh, one of the um, sisters who left a review, she says it's all this negative stuff going on but it's it's it is the reality but it's told so beautifully yep it's not being it is messy our story and red ink does create a safe space a beautiful space for us to share very honestly just like we're doing right now on authors tell all to share very honestly and to evolve and resolve some of these issues in a most honest way mm-hmm that very well spoken I couldn't have said it better myself because it's very true and viewer listener says again now say when is the sequel dropping will we find out who the shooter is Hmm. I don't really think she would too much give away anything for that next book but let's see what she has to say you're gonna find out a whole lot of things. It's all going to be revealed. All your questions, I'm gonna, well, I will say, oh, mostly all 
all of your questions will certainly be answered. Mm-hmm. And there will be something. It's going to be an interesting sequel. I'll say it is certainly going to be interesting. And um, I'm in the process of tweaking it now and making sure it's up to par for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, so when, I don't want to say when yet. It won't be too, too long. Right now, I'm focusing on allowing folks to get acquainted with Red Ink. Mm-hmm. Bosses, bullies, and butterflies. And then um, once folks get acquainted and get to know the characters and we share in some more forums like your wonderful podcast, then you can look forward to the sequel coming really, really soon. You You know, that's how I am with my books as well. You know, I just don't want to write the first book you know I wanted to let it settle a little bit and let them just let yeah. it soak in and while you are soaking it in I'm I'm working on the second book or I might even be on the third book that's just how I write I just don't speed write I can't oof, I cannot write a book within a, a month it just I, I just can't write my book within, within a month or a couple of weeks it has to be a good few months and that's what I'm doing with my first series I'm giving it some time to you know have me develop it and you know get what the readers have said about the first book be like okay okay I see what they said let me tweak this let me tweak that that's how I that's how I definitely feel about a series that's how I definitely feel like it has to soak in before you just throw the the second or the third book on on your readers right let it marinate. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a um, it's a crock pot simmer, as opposed to um, a microwavable meal. Yep. Yeah. Let it simmer. Let the seasoning soak in. Mm-hmm. Think about it. Talk about it. Share about it. Love about it. Do all those things about it. And by the time we finish with that, the sequel will come, and mm-hmm. we'll do the same thing sequel and then we'll be on to the next book i'm really i'm very excited about the other books that um i have in my coffers you know as well i have so many books that are done Mm -hmm. but i'm like it's not time to put those out yet let me work on the books that's in my mind that i need to you know write out first the books that's already finished oh i could definitely publish those later but the stories in my head now i need to write them down just get it all out of my system. When I do that, that's when I take my break. Until until I feel like, okay, the story is finished. I have my little break, my relaxation. But until then, I'm working. Non-stop. Yes. Absolutely. Yep. And um, my family, they're all, they were like, she's so ambitious. You know, they never knew I was going to be a writer. They, they seen the artisticness in me and they was like oh she's gonna be an artist it's no doubt but when I said oh I'm an author I have my book published they was like what I don't believe you I was like you don't believe me okay search up this name and watch who picture pops up with that book and their face just dropped <laughs> yeah. just dropped immediately I was like well you see what happens when you just spring something on somebody that's so good. And they're like, I don't read, but I'm definitely going to read this. Not because we're family, because I believed in you from the get-go. But I just didn't know you were going to do this. That's what makes me happy inside. Mm-hmm. That's what definitely... And that's what with, with my readers and with new people who come along who, who have read my work before... And they'd be like, oh, you should get published. Like, I've heard that line so many times. And I was like, oh, I'm not ready for that. Mm-mm. I'm not ready until I feel like my work ethic is on point. Until then, I'm not publishing anything on Amazon or nothing like that. Now look at me. <laughs> mm-hmm. And her work ethic is so beautiful i'm telling you i've had already 
peeped out some of her work. And I was like, oh yeah, she's definitely going to be on this show. <laughs> oh, who's that? You. <laughs> Me? Yes. <laughs> say this I give you 10 years where do you see yourself with your books will you still be writing will you be a bestseller will you be I I want to see where your mindset is about your future as an author my future as an author Mm -hmm. um the next 10 years or so writing more and more of the same. Mm-hmm. Probably at least one good film. Yes, I love to hear that. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to actually publish um Mm-hmm. Interesting. That are going to be published. Mm-hmm. So, and in the nonfiction area, my focus is black music history. So, I'm probably going to have several of those completed. Mm-hmm. And, and those those take quite a bit of time. There's a lot of research involved. Yes, definitely. Those history books and so forth. So I'm probably going to do several of those. And I will certainly continue to write fiction. And one good film. One good film. I'd love to see it. what I'm thinking. And a whole, quite a few books quite a few I I hope that I will say this I hope that I'm writing classics Mm -hmm. that's what I hope I love to hear that that I I love to hear yeah I hope that I'm writing classics so in 10 years maybe you know 8 good classics 1 good film and I have several black music history books that will be published. That sounds lovely. Now I'm gonna put this out into the to the atmosphere. The book that yeah. you have already published, I can already tell that's going to be your classic. Your number one first classic. That right there. Mm-hmm. Oh, I truly do believe. You are warming the cockles of my soul, Shato. <laughs> Thank you. Now, I this was such a blessed energy interview book discussion. Is there any shout outs you'd like to give at the end of this? Oh my goddess. Yes. I'm so glad you opened this space for that. First and foremost, I have to shout out my co-pilot in this cosmic conspiracy, my husband who helps me every step of the way, who elevates me and evolves me in this creative work. Definite divine gratitude and love to him. Um, Of course, my family, my mother, my daughter. Um, Major key publishing, Kian and Nicole, an extraordinary force. She has shown me, taught me so much. Mm-hmm. Precious and priceless spirit she is. Big shout out to her. Big shout out to Major Key family, you and Gina and Storm. And Britt, especially them, 
because they've been so supportive and so loving in the red ink experience. Um, my readers, Pamela Hunter, Divine Force. Just an awesome, awesome experience of soul. Say Feet, Rise Bullard. Awesome. These are some readers that, I mean, they just love us. I know you're probably familiar with them, Mm -hmm. but they really do. They are so loving and so giving and so sharing. Rise and Say and Pamela and Shannon and Diamond. Awesome, awesome sisters. I absolutely adore them. Um, Crystal Alexis, because she is just pink and prissy and bubbly and sugary and yummy. She's a gorgeous spirit. Love her. And like I said again, all the MKP family, and of course you shot soul thank you because you are doing a beautiful work here with the podcast and I am infinitely and divinely grateful to you for that absolutely thank you so much I love when the author really enjoyed speaking on what they love to write and what they love doing that's exactly why I do this podcast and I loved having you on the show definitely going to have you again that is a Oh my must. gosh, I would be so honored. Yes. That is a must. Because this whole energy was lovely. Perfect. Likewise. You're a beautiful spirit, a beautiful soul. And I'm ever grateful to you, Starlight. Thank you. And with that, guys, I love you. She loves you. Good night. Have a blessed night. See you guys later. Mwah. Bye.